Hello, uh, my name's David Jenny, and uh, I've been in OpenStreetMap since 2009 doing various mapping tasks, and more recently got involved with Open Historical Map. And you might be wondering why Open Historical Map? Well, for studying history, learning about history, and I study in the past, it's probably good to have a timeline and if you can take that timeline and add a spatial dimension to it and show some map component it makes it even better so I think the open historical map is a great tool with a lot of potential for learning about and studying history um, this is so so how many here like to go somewhere and then put something they noticed in the area on the map Okay, about half of you. The rest of you probably want to do that, but don't want to admit it. <laughs> but, uh, um, anyways, that's that's the reason, uh, uh, part of the impetus behind this. Uh, here's my contact information. Probably the best way to get a hold of me is that email address there. Um, I I do I am involved in I'm on the Slack. OSM channel, several of those, OTM US or whatever it is, as well as Open Historical Map. Twitter, I've kind of grayed that out. I don't pay a whole lot of attention to Twitter, and I certainly don't tweet a lot. Um, anyways, this, this uh, whole thing was put together because of a trip we made to National Parks, a family trip up to parks in South Dakota and Wyoming. And uh, I was kind of wondering why they threw this presentation in with all these educational and youth-oriented talks. And then I realized, okay, my two grandchildren went on this trip, so that must be the reason. <laughs> and uh, it was primarily the impetus behind this was uh, uh, my wife Sue came up with a great idea of uh, offering Samantha, the girl in the, uh, on the left-hand side of that uh, pose there, uh, a trip to any national park she chose, and she chose Yellowstone, so we visited a few others on the way there and the way back as well. Um, but one stop was at Grand Teton National Park, and of course Grand Teton's uh, well known for its beautiful mountains, uh, wonderful lakes, it's just a beautiful scenic park. Um, and uh, the mountains geologically are very young. We're talking about five to 10 million years or so. They're probably not young enough to put on the time slider for open historical map, but, uh, but I've, tried, I've added the peaks anyways, just as a static item. And Grand Teton National Park has some history, some interesting history. The oldest building in Grand Teton National Park is the Cunningham Cabin. And that was established in 1888. John and Margaret Cunningham settled here. And you notice the style of architecture is something that was probably active in the Appalachian Mountains and Southern Appalachians before that time. So it might have given an idea where they came from. I don't know for sure. But, um, but this structure is still standing, but it's the oldest structure in Grand Teton National Park. And it was also the site of a gun battle. In 1892, some wranglers came by and uh, asked John for some hay, and I guess he accommodated and also gave him a place to stay. So they stayed on the ranch for that winter. And then the following spring, word got out that these wranglers were actually horse thieves. And so some U.S. Marshals rode into Jackson, and then they surrounded the ranch, and a gun battle ensued and killed the Wranglers. Uh, it was never established whether they were actually horse thieves or whether the U.S. Marshal and his deputies were actually U.S. Marshals. So, um, but in any case, that's uh, how, the question becomes, of course, you're all are here for mapping, right? So, so how do you put something like this on a historical map? Well, it's pretty much the same as adding it to OpenStreetMap. So the ID editor is available. It's just a different URL to connect to, and you do need a separate login for Open Historical Map. Um, or you can use the JASM editor. Um, and very much the same, the tagging's the same. So here we put in the building. 
Uh, it's also on the uh, USGS Topo map, and it's still standing today, so it shows up on the imagery. So I added it to the horse historical map. The main difference between the historical map and the open street map are two tags that are added in the historical map, start date and end date. So I've added a start date of 1888 to this cabin site. Uh, it's still standing, so there's no end date put on there in this case. So makes it very nice to be able to do that. There's some other interesting historical features in the area. Uh, this is probably the most photographed barn in the country. And it's easy to see why with the beautiful mountains in the background. But this is on the T.A. Moulton Ranch, which is part of an area known as Mormon Row, um, now part of the National Park. But uh, this was built in 1916, and it's still standing, so it was pretty easy to add it to the map. And it's also on OpenStreetMap, by the way, too. Um, However, there's some other buildings that were on the T.A. Moulton Ranch that are no longer standing. So how do we go about adding those? Well, one way is to find some old maps. And this particular map of the ranch itself is from a Historic American Building Survey, which is also commissioned by the National Park Service in this case. And the survey was in 1977. Um, and there were a number of buildings that were photographed for that survey and uh, uh, put on this map, uh, located. A lot of them were in bad disrepair in 1977, and most of them are gone today, except for the barn, which is circled there. The house and the granary are uh, no longer standing, and the picture of the house is shown here. That cabin was built in 1912 and enlarged to, to the shape here shown in the house and on the map there. So. So that's one way. So what I do is take these maps, historic maps, either from USGS, Library of Congress, this is available at the Library of Congress, by the way, website, so, uh, and upload it to an application called MapWorker, and it's mapworker.net, and your OSM login credentials can be used there. So. And you just load it up, give it some metadata, Other, it'll be available for other people to use, Make sure it's uh, suitable for you know public domain, not copyrighted, so so it can be used. Um, and then you rectify the map or align it, and there there are two parallel windows there, and you just put a tag in each one to line up the one is the OSM map, and then the other is the map that you've just uploaded. So you can use that, and it always comes out perfectly. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> after after uploading to Map Warper, you frequently have to. I, I if you get within an area and you can see on the imagery where things really are today, traces of what used to be there, that always works out pretty good. So, so that's generally what I do. You make a note of the URL there. Uh, there's an export tab, which will show you how to get the imagery downloaded, and um, then you can just go into the preferences and JASM and just uh, add it in um, and then give it a name so you recognize it. So here that same map, by the way the map in the map in the previous picture, north was to the right so here it's oriented correctly. The barn is shown highlighted in red there and uh, it's the, I've upped the transparency a little bit so the underlying image shows but apparently it doesn't look too good in this picture but good enough for tracing and then the map or the house and the granary that are down at the bottom, which are no longer standing. So I just went ahead and added those based on this uh, image here, and then uh, added start dates and end dates. I put end dates for 1977 because they were still there. Uh, I don't know exactly when those uh, disappeared or when they uh, fell down completely, but uh, but it's nice for the renderer to have established dates. So okay. Five minutes. Oh, uh, better hurry up. Okay. <laughs> um, Grand Teton National Park is also home to Jackson Lake, um, and uh, Jackson Lake was a natural lake, but it was enlarged. And uh, here I've traced out using JASM the original lake, which is shown in red, and that was based on a 1900 topo map. And the enlarged lake is extends up to the north that you can see there. So. So this is uh, 
kind of an animated picture. I, I hope it's coming up animated there. But uh, yeah, you can see the lake getting larger after they built the dam. And then the National Park comes along here in 1929. And um, in 1943, Jackson Hole National Monument was added to the east of the National Park. And the two of those were combined in 1950. Um, and the same thing here. This is, uh, if you like, light, rising lake levels. It's Hebgen Lake in, along the Madison River in Montana. And this is just west of Yellowstone National Park. And the dam for this lake was built in 1917. And uh, you can see there, I don't have the uh, map that shows the road before that time, so I'm using the same road there throughout. That other lake up in the northwest is called Earthquake Lake. And that was formed in 1959 when an earthquake uh, but actually, toward the back of that picture, you can see a big scar in that mountain in the center left there. And that's where a landslide took place as a result of an earthquake in August of 1959. Uh, it formed the dam, dammed up the Madison River, forming this earthquake lake. It buried a campground, killing 28 people, and also changed some of the plumbing around Yellowstone National Park, so it altered some of the geysers and so on. And of course, we, we also visited Yellowstone. You can see lots of tourists and hydrothermal features, wildlife. History of Yellowstone goes back about, well, at least 12,000 years when Indians mined uh, obsidian from Obsidian Cliff here. And some of those tools have been found as far away as Ohio. Um, this is a map showing Obsidian Cliff. Um, between Mammoth and Norris uh, Geyser Basin. And the picture on the right there shows how they built the road there in the 1880s. Uh, what they did was just heat up the obsidian, uh, building some big fires, and then put some water on it to cool it off, and then shattered the obsidian, which made clearing it away much, much easier to. Uh, some of the Yellowstone history. Yellowstone was founded 150 years ago. Uh, the, first, the first superintendent at Langford, in 1874, he requested a budget of 100000 to build roads and uh, maintain the park. Of course, that was turned down. So what do you do when you don't have money to you need to build roads and uh, patrol the park? Well, you send in the Army. So there's uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, Build a build, built buildings there, or the U.S. Army soldiers had a camp and so on. So that, they pretty much uh, took care of the park for a long time, or for it's a couple of decades, anyways. Um, some of the documents used in mapping the history of Yellowstone National Park. There's a history of the road building here, and you can look that up. That's on the Library of Congress website. Uh, and then old maps, this one in particular was built, uh, put together by the U.S. Army in 1900. <coughs> Up in the upper right hand corner is a place called Baronet Bridge. That was built in 1871 by that gentleman, not for tourists, but to service mining claims up in Cook City, Montana. And in 1877, it was partly burned. Um, the Army chased the Nez Perce Indians with Chief Joseph through Yellowstone National Park, and on their way out the north end to Canada, they set fire to the bridge. That's um, another interesting uh, road is the East Entrance Road, and this, these pictures show the way it was prior to 1928. A very steep road going down the canyon, uh, kind of wrapped over itself with that wooden trestle at first, and then on the right side is the uh, the bridge that replaced it, uh, concrete and rock uh, culvert there. Um, and that is still standing today, and this picture was taken from the present road, which is much higher up. And then here you can kind of see the original corkscrew, and then in 1928, comes along and it's replaced by the present road. These uh, maps, that are, these animated maps are all taken from directly from uh, open historical map. There's a time slider that you can see on the bottom that you can move across and uh, 
uh, adjust in different ways and uh, or set it off to kind of automate and go through too so so that's pretty much it uh, these are some of the resources here of uh, um, that I used in putting uh, things on the map and as well as using uh, uh, put this presentation together um, the one on the bottom is copyrighted but I think it's very interesting anyway so be careful using that on the uh, it's usn's.com and it describes the U.S. national highways, um, which are in this area too, of course. So, uh, the others are mostly government sites and uh, are, are, of course, free to use. And my contact information is at the bottom there. So, so thank you very much.